May God bless you. Once again, it is so good to be here with you in this Bible study. I am grateful for the attention that you pay to these studies. And today we will begin with our study in the book of Romans chapter 4. And today we begin in this chapter 4 and it is about Abraham's faith and the title is Abraham believed God and we will read the first verses I invite you to go with me to the Word of God in Romans chapter 4 and the scripture says what then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh for if Abraham was justified by works he has something to boast about, but not before God. And so the context in um, verse 31, so that we can understand the rhetoric question, uh, Romans 3.31, it says, Do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. And that is where chapter 4 begins, where it says, What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. And so let's look at this. Paul begins chapter 4 with a question. And so he asks, What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? These rhetoric questions have the end to make us, or the purpose, to make us reflect. And the first truth that Paul establishes is that if we were justified by, the, by works, he has something to glory in, but not before God. When it is the works that are presented by God, then a payment is accepted because one could say, well, Lord, I'm faithful and I have problems and I need your help. And I remember you, I remind you that I've served a lot. And so our works expect a payment. But when it is by grace, when it is a favor from God, where we did nothing to earn it or to deserve it, then it is God who receives the glory. Why does Paul take us to this reflection? For the reason that the rabbis of old, they wrote the following about Abraham, that their father Abraham had kept all of the law and that Abraham had been perfect in all his works. What they are saying is that Abraham had been perfect in keeping the law, a law that still had not been given. Paul doesn't say that Abraham was perfect because of his works, but that God counted Abraham as just and that it was counted to him as justice. So we're going to look in verse 3 of chapter 4 of Romans, and it says, For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, as Genesis 15, verse 6, and Galatians 3, verse 6. Now let's look at this. Paul mentions in Romans, in this chapter, 4 verse 3 mentions Genesis 15 1 through 6 so let's go to Genesis and we're going to read this because it is very important that we understand it and that we search into it and, and search in the beginning when God gave the promise to Abraham and the scripture says after these things the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying do not be afraid Abraham Abram, I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Ele Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring indeed. One born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. 
Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven, and count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And verses, verse 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. So Paul makes a mention of this. Not in Abram's work, so that he could be declared just. It was that he believed in the promise. Abraham receives a promise from God that he was that he would receive a son and that that son was going to be his heir. Now Abraham or Abraham believed in that promise. He believed God and he did not believe in his own strength either. And we're going to see this as well when, so we can know what we're saying when we speak in his own strength. We're going to see why was his faith counted to him as righteousness. Number one, because in the natural, it was impossible for Abraham to have a child. And we're going to see it clearly. When through the biography, we could say, uh, Sarah was a barren woman. Second, Sarah no longer ovulated. She no longer had the custom of the women or the menstruation or her period. And so it was a difficult situation. So she was not only barren, but she no longer ovulated to be able to conceive a child, a son. So Abraham was already old. It says in Hebrews 11, 12, it says that he was like a dead man. In other words, he could no longer conceive. So look at this couple. He can, can he cannot conceive and, uh, or he cannot, um, he doesn't have, he no longer can have a child and neither can she. But Abraham, believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness but it was not because of his strength or his own power and in the natural let's remember he can no longer bear children it was that in faith he believed in the promise of the child Abraham believed that he he took it as a given that he had the son even though he didn't have him any longer so let's go over to Romans where we are, Romans 4, 17, and it says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who he believed God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things, things which do not exist as though they did. So he believed it, the promise, and he took it as if it was already done. And that is why it was counted to him as righteousness. Though Abraham's faith was tested, Abraham and Sarah had to wait for the fulfilling of that promise until, when did the son arrive? It was until their strength was completely emptied. Abraham realized that his, their bodies were already more dead than alive, but he never grew weak or became weak in his faith because faith has nothing to do with our strength or with what we can contribute or with, with what we can give. And so Abraham's faith was tested. We always believe that it was tested when he gave Abraham in Mount Moriah, but no, it was tested in the waiting of the fulfillment. And he waited on God for God to fulfill his promise and so God waited till Abraham had no strength, so he had no uh, nothing to do with this in the fulfillment of the promise of the Son. And this is so that they would give the glory to God. And remember that faith will not put anyone to shame. Abraham and Sarah believed God, and they were not put to shame. Because of that faith, they received Isaac, and they received him from their own body though they were already almost dead and incapable of conceiving or bearing a child and we're going to use or paul uses this illustration for us we have the promises of the gospel and the 
total sum of all of those promises is to present us holy, without blemish, and irreproachable before God. And in the context, it tells us how is it that we're going to be irreproachable and holy by the work of Christ, not by our own works, not by our own strength, not because we're so good, but because of the justice of Christ. Amen. These promises were given to us by, through the gospel, when we were still sinners and ungodly people. And I know you're saying, Amen, Amen. But if we believe in the promises of God, just like Abraham did, then God will also count up, count that faith as justice. We believe by faith in the work of Christ for salvation. And when we believe in the redeeming work of Jesus, we present our bodies so that His power will be manifest and His transformational work will operate in us. It has nothing to do with us. It is His work in us. And the son that came to Abraham that God gave to him had nothing to do with his body. His body was dead. It was the power of God that was manifested. And so what is our business? Our business is to present our bodies after we have believed in the promise of salvation and we have been justified through the work of Christ. What is our business? What is our duty? Abraham presented his dead body so that God would give him a son. And so our duty is the same. We ought to present our bodies so that God's power will manifest and so that his transforming power will operate in us and out of a barren life without fruit, dead, the Lord will give us a life full of spiritual fruits. Let's present, as the Apostle Paul says, furthermore, our bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable in front of God. We have been accepted so that He will manifest His power in us and so that a spiritual work will be manifest. Abraham and Sarah presented their bodies and a spiritual man was formed in them. He calls the things that are not, that are, God calls the things that are not as if they were. And we believe that God is able to do more abundantly and exceedingly than we have believed. He is mighty. It is all by faith. And faith is counted to us as righteousness. Now, just like Abraham's faith was tested, our faith will also be tested. Our own strength should be poured out before his promise becomes fulfilled. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, ver 12, verse 9. Uh, Paul is praying and he's asking God to take away the thorn that is bothering him tremendously in his body. And God tells him, stop asking me this. And he says, my grace is sufficient for you. And it is a unmerited favor where we had nothing to do with it. It says, for my strength, the, that's the strength of God, is made perfect in weakness so let's stop acting like we are strong and like and do it and like i make the effort yes let's make the effort but no matter how much effort we make let's present our bodies as a living sacrifice here i am lord in my weakness if you and i do not recognize our weakness the lord is going to wait until you and i empty ourselves of that self-sufficiency that I'm so holy, so perfect, and I do everything right, and that I don't do anything wrong, well, he's going to wait until we die. Abraham, it says he was like a dead man, and so was Sarah. And that's when they got the child. So, brothers and sisters, look at how beautiful the Word of God is. No matter how much we fight in battle, we are imperfect. But in our imperfection, God's power is perfected. Abraham could have said, this is impossible. How is it that I'm going to have a child? I am older every day. Time has passed and I haven't had the child. He could have said that. My wife is not only barren, but she doesn't even ovulate anymore. He could have said that. This is truly impossible. And we, we can say this too. How could God make out of me 
a man or a woman that is irreproachable, holy and pure because no matter how much I've tried, I've been unsuccessful. Time has passed and the more time has passed, I'm barren. And maybe we've thought like that. You know, I'm an example of that. Lord, it's been 44 years in your ways and Lord, there's so much wrong with me still. I still look so imperfect. And the Lord says, well, I'm going to fulfill my purpose. Continue to die. Continue to become weak so that my power will be perfected in your weakness. And so Abraham, he gave up his dead body and so did Sarah so that God would operate a transformation in their bodies and they could receive the son. So what is our business, you might ask? How can we walk in the faith that Abraham walked? Simply to be satisfied with what is considered our justice. What is considered for us to be our justice? It is Jesus Christ. He is our justice. His work. But we are not satisfied. We want to add to the work. Our pride takes us to, uh, I have to look or I have to do and do. No, you don't have to look. No, let God work. And I tell this to myself. I need to let God do the work. You are not perfect. You have to die. Until Abraham was like a dead man and Sarah was like a dead woman. Then. So, our duty is to be satisfied with the work of Christ and we press into that work of Christ in us and to think about that about the justice of Christ the righteousness of Christ that God no longer treats us like sinners that God is no longer angry or full of wrath against us that God our father no longer considers us as prisoners of death that Eternal condemnation no longer awaits us. Let's think about that. And that comes because of the righteousness of Christ. Because he took our place so that we would experiment that transformation in our lives. Abraham believed in the promise of the Son. And I repeat to you, this was counted to him as justice. We believe in the promise of salvation in Christ and it is counted for us as justice. Now let's look at this. Abraham not only believed in the promise of the Son, but he experimented the birth of the Son out of his own body. God expects the same of us. We've already believed and the promise of the Son of God that Jesus was sent to die for us and that it was counted to us as righteousness. Because of the righteousness of Christ, not because of ours, but now we should experiment the life of the Son in us. Sarah experimented a life forming inside of her. But when did this come? It was when her body was as a dead body, surrendered so that the son would be formed in her and Abraham received the son. God did not promise the work that he began or better said, God did promise that the work that he began in us, he would finish it and perfect it. So it is the work of God. It is not our work. Everything will continue to be the work of God in us and so let's not stay in just believing that i have been justified without overcoming sin and we need to experiment a spiritual birth in our life in other words isaac the spiritual child of the seed of the gospel that we have received by faith in christ now we have experimented the justice of Christ so that he will be reality, that the virtues of Christ will be manifest in our own bodies. In other words, Christ in us to be visible, to make the work of justification visible through himself living in us. Do you see? that we can take no credit for this. 
It is not our good works. It is the work of God. It is the work of Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit in us. The Son of God will make himself visible because this is not left hidden. We can't say, oh, I believe I'm spiritual. Yes, I have a promise of salvation and now the works have to be shown. The Son of God will be made visible. If Christ is in us, He will be made visible through the works of the Spirit. And this can only be a reality when we have emptied ourselves of our own justice, of our own strength, to accomplish what is unreachable, which is a birth that comes from the Spirit. Because this can only be possible through the transforming work of the Holy Spirit in us. As it is written in chapter 4, verse 17, it says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, in the presence of him who he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope, believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of sarah's womb when did the work perfect in them when did the son of the promise come it was when their bodies were already almost dead or as dead and they were already he was already a hundred years old and the deadness in sarah's um, womb and i like brother jose angel's expression when he says a dry womb there was nothing there that could produce any longer so beloved in christ we reach the conclusion of this study mary said now, speaking about Mary of Nazareth, um, the mother of Jesus, she said, she asked, how can I have a child if I do not know a man? And this here is going to confirm to us 100% that it is not the work of man, but the work of God. Abraham could have said, how could I have a child with a barren woman? And she's almost dead, like I'm almost dead. He could have asked that question. Clearly, this teaches us that this is not the work of man or woman that is going to make this spiritual birth possible in us. That son of the promise. The spiritual birth is uh, accomplished through faith. That faith will bring us close to God through justification. Second, we should be conscious that it is not by human means that the spiritual man will be formed in us to be able to overcome sin. Here, all of our human efforts should be exhausted, as in the case of Abraham and Sarah. Just uh, as with them, the birth of Isaac didn't happen until they were exhausted. And it seems repetitive, but it was not until they emptied their strength, their striving to have the son of the promise and so that's when god put the seed of life in them and so now when we believe in the work of christ and we are justified god has brought us close to him and we enter into a relationship with him and there cannot be fruits if there's not a relationship there cannot be a son if there is no relationship a personal and intimate relationship when we enter that relationship with god the seed of life entered into our hearts in other words his word and when we received it christ begins to be formed in us when we receive that seed because it is not of us abraham had no seed sarah had no more eggs and so when we had have submitted ourselves to god here i am lord you promised to perfect your work in me with holiness i cannot i cannot enter and the justification that took me to salvation takes me to another step which is sanctification but that can only happen 
by the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, I need, I'm dead and I need to finish dying because as long as Abraham was trying to have the son, the son didn't come, but he believed. And so the son came through the seed of life of God and we will continue. So, therefore, when we receive his word in us, Christ begins to be formed in us to show the works of Christ and so that God will be glorified. Not to show my works, not to say, oh, I have Christ in my life, I've received him and I know the word and I receive the word. And every time that I'm in the studies, I say I receive the word. Yes, you receive the word. If you do, the fruit is going to show because this word is life, this seed is life and there has to be fruit. The word bears fruit. Abraham believed, and when he was dead, when there was no more possibilities, then he trusted, and by the faith in the word and the seed, the Son came. So, beloved in Christ, since everything has been given by grace, by the unmerited favor of God, the angel told Mary, you are blessed, not because she was the only, um, only virgin, not because she was the only a um, single woman. There was a lot of women who qualified as Mary, but God filled her with His grace, a favor that she didn't have a way to earn and that she didn't deserve either because none of us are deserving of the grace of God, a favor of God that doesn't ask of us anything in exchange because if He asked uh, something of us, then that would be a payment. But Mary... All she did was believe in the promise of a son that would not come by the intervention of a man, but by the work of the Holy Spirit in her. Abraham believed in God and did not believe that it was in his own strength that he was going to have the child. But they presented their bodies in faith, believing that God would form in them Isaac, the spiritual man. Let it be in me, his will, was Mary's answer. They gave by faith, or Mary by faith surrendered her will to the plan and purpose of God in her life. What did Abraham and Sarah do? She, They surrendered their lives and they believed that though they could no longer have children in their strength, they believed God and they gave up their bodies for the will of God and a birth took place. And we can say the same thing. Lord, I have believed in the work of Christ. I have been justified while I was guilty. You've brought me close to you by your grace, by a favor I don't deserve. I was dead in my sins and my trespasses. And there was no possibility of Christ being formed in me. I could not live a spiritual life because I was dead. But because of my faith in your work, in your power, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice so that Christ will be formed in us and we can show the works of Christ through our lives. Therefore, it will be so good to tell the Lord, Father, I surrender my will so that it will, your Son will be formed in me. I surrender my will. I surrender my body. I pour myself out. I surrender. I'm no longer going to fight in my own strength. When we surrender our will to the will of God, Christ, who is the Son of Promise, as Genesis 3.15 tells us, the Savior and the promise given to Adam, that Son of the Promise, will be formed in us. Let's surrender our wills, beloved in Christ. Let's surrender ourselves to the will of our Heavenly Father. What is the will of our Father? That Christ is formed in us. What was the will of God for Abraham? To give him a son. Because from him, a nation. He was going to raise up a nation so numerous. And he was going to have so many children of faith as countless or as many as the stars in the sky. And so through the surrendering of Abraham, where he poured himself out of all his strength, when it was no longer his own works, that there was 
no hope because there was faith against faith. And so it was his faith and then it was his hope in the promise. When he surrendered like that, that's when it fulfilled. That's when the development of the plan of God started happening, of the promise from Genesis 3.15. And the son of the promise, Isaac, of the promise that God gave, he raised a mighty nation so that out of that mighty nation, Jesus Christ, our Savior, would come through. Colossians 1.27, it says, Christ in us is the hope of glory. And not only for us, but for everyone who believes. But for everyone who believes. And that through us, Christ is revealed. We are that nation. We can say we are the sons of God, but we are sons of Abraham through faith. And God is forming Christ in us if we allow Christ to be formed in us because Christ in us is the hope of salvation for a world that is getting lost. So this reach is much more than what we have thought of. What uh, That surrender of Abraham, that faith of Abraham, that waiting in the time of God. He was 70 years old when he received the promise. He's already 100 years old and he was like a dead man there was no more possibility in his own strength but he continued to believe and when he poured himself out and he said i've already tried for 30 years and it hasn't come but when (laughs) there was no more hope even if they tried that is when god gave them the seed of life and this is glorious through the son of promise that god gave to abraham the development of the plan of God for the salvation of the world began and this is to hit it in the nail head and so through us the son the son of God being developed in us puts into action the plan to save the whole world so Christ in us is the hope of glory for a humanity who needs of Christ do you see your responsibility and my responsibility it's not just to say i've accepted christ okay you accepted him that's the first step by faith and you are justified but it doesn't stay there you know i'm justified and look at me because look at who i am now uh they're gonna get lost and i'm not i've got a a eternal life guaranteed yes he justified us to separate us to be a people that will announce the virtues of Christ. Not who we are through Christ, but to announce what Christ has done in us to announce his virtues. And we will be the ones who demonstrate those virtues. How are we going to demonstrate those virtues? Loving like Christ, forgiving like Christ, walking in his ways. What else? In a character like Christ in a humility, in a meekness like Christ. And so when they see those virtues in us, because Christ is in us, because we've already received the seed of life and we are in obedience, submitting ourselves so that Christ will be formed in us. And when Christ is forming in us, then something's going to get deformed. And we want to look so perfect. Well, guess what? We're going to be deformed so that Christ will be formed because when mary received the seed of life there was a deformation maybe she had a sculpt a sculpture body a flat belly and she wore her beautiful belt but when christ began to reveal himself well then a a weird bump started to show so beloved in christ let's let him deform all of those things that we believe are good in us and that he will be formed in us. Christ in us is the hope of glory for a world that perishes and is the hope of glory for us that we will be with him in glory. May God bless you abundantly is the desire of my heart. Blessings, beloved.